Buzz, Australia's only live, interactive social media program on free-to-air TV, is proudly brought to you by ZNet, Australia's premier ISP for all of your high-speed home and business internet needs. Australia's first and still only social media TV show. Great to have your company this evening. If you do want to join us on the show at any point throughout the next half an hour, all you've got to do is jump on Twitter and use hashtag the buzz. And if you've got Zetanet as your internet service provider, you're going to be able to do that particularly quickly because it's Easily. a great, fast, reliable With no service. no errors, you just, it's like you don't even need to be there, it'll just do it itself. Now we did want to point out the 17th of May, that's coming up, it's not far away, it's my wife's birthday as well, is West TV's third birthday. Yes, third, we're having a birthday goodness. party, we're, we're three years old. How exciting is that? We're almost out of nappies, Jason. <laughs> we are. Thank <laughs> heavens, not a moment too soon. Very nearly there. We've got quite a jam-packed show this evening, so we're going to get right into it. Do you know where Serena is? Under the desk. I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. Let the rain wash away all the pain of yesterday. Right, well, um, Serena, $5,000 and uh, an iPhone. I, an iPhone today was added to it, so you know, if you didn't think $5,000 was enough, maybe the extra iPhone might get you to choose it. I'd imagine if you stole this dog, because the rumour is this, the dog's been stolen because it's a purebred staffy, mm -hmm. uh, just take it back and get the money and buy a new dog. <laughs> a new dog, that's uh, right. Although the other, I mean, I don't know how the owners of the dog would actually feel about handing you over the money. Oh, I did steal it, can I have the money now? Do you know what's going nuts on social media at the moment? It's also going nuts in the mainstream media as well. Apparently, allegedly, Hoyt's carousel has a little bit of a mouse infestation. But here's how I like to think about it. If they're showing Le Miserable in gold class, adding some mice to it just adds some needed realism. Have you seen the picture of, of the actual uh, offending uh, rodent? He is the skankiest looking ratty mouse. He looks like he has just literally crawled through the sewer. Are you sure and, it's not a Photoshop job? For a bit of, you know, chip and mayo action. It's definitely not Photoshop. I, well, it certainly doesn't look photoshopped. How I mean, come he hasn't got red eye? You never know. Well, maybe she's got the red eye reduction thing on. Oh, you can get that on your phone right. pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I understand. Uh, well, the good thing is, if you are a fan of the mouse, because he is building quite a lot of popularity here mm -hmm. in Perth, mm. uh, he now has his own Twitter account. Ah, perfect. Uh, and he says things like, well, it's getting late and I've had a really big day. I must scurry back to my hole and decompress. See you at the cinema tomorrow. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Love Hoyt's Premier underscore is where he's at. mouse, if you would like to follow the Hoyt's mouse on Twitter. Um, time for us to, uh, to have a chat with Candice and find out what's going on in the social media world. Hadokening, Candice, what's that all about? Yeah, indeed, from taking photos of mice in cinemas to taking photos of yourself in weird and unusual situations. It's not something we're completely unfamiliar with. Think planking, think the lying down game, think owling, think all of the other weird photo fads we've had. But hadokening is the new one which has been embraced by mostly young Japanese girls at this stage. And for anyone familiar with Dragon Ball Z, it's kind of that energy fight stance, that energy attack stance, which is also featured in uh, Street Fighter, the video game from the late 80s, early 90s as well. So people recreating these stances but of course we Australians we do take things a little bit further and we do tend to make things a little bit more mainstream think again the lying down game compared to planking and here we have public pottering um, <laughs> it's recreating famous scenes from the Harry Potter sort of franchise of movies and novels and seemingly defying gravity while taking a photograph. It is all quite interesting at the moment. Uh, the Facebook page has over 4,500 people on there and uh, not too bad at all. Um, another thing which is going viral out there at the moment and with a slight language warning, so cover the ears of the little kiddies at home, is this wee clip. What kind of truck is it? A um, um, fire truck. It's not a fire truck, that's a dump truck. What is it? It's a dog flush. Dog flush. Seems 
to me that's like the sort of video clip that you'd find on liveleak.com. Look, I wish when my kids said that four letter word they were just doing it as a speechy kitty thing <laughs> and not actually telling me to get effed, which is right. what they tend to do. Uh, having a look at websites, interesting websites, news media is being disseminated. A lot of people follow stories on Twitter or we see stuff posted on, posted on Facebook. Uh, how many people still read the newspaper? I don't know, maybe your granddad, but that's about it. LiveLeak is one of these sites. Now, the difference between LiveLeak and, let's say, a site like Crazy Shit, which is, you know, just basically different videos of people slicing their penis in half, this one is uh, more from news fronts, more police videos, more CCTV videos, and usually if they spread around, they actually come from LiveLeak first. A lot of people go here first. Uh, so you can see lots of stuff uh, that so is... So we're likely to see things like, you know, people getting killed in war scenes and that kind of Kind of thing. You will. Uh, you'll see the aftermaths of bombs. You'll see uh, the footage. I guess that's picked up by Al Jazeera and then shown. And uh, it's quite a right-wing website. So a lot of the you mean stories that by the comments, though. Yeah, the, a lot of the comments were, and even the editorials themselves on the stuff that's posted. Uh, so you'll see a lot of that kind of persuasion. Uh, but it's certainly interesting if you want to see a lot of the videos before they get to the mainstream, uh, and a lot of the stuff that is starting to cycle around two or three days before it'll even make it to Twitter and stuff. Live leak is usually a great. So we will whack a not safe for work warning on this? There, there was a time where they used to have stronger videos on there and they, they weren't covered, but now they'll say mature content and you have to click through and actually say you're 18. Because so I think the actual original source of LiveLeak was a website that was known as ogrish.com in yeah. its day, and Ogrish was all about gore. Yeah, well, this this is this is far more, I guess, newsy than than those pure mm. uh, what are they called gore porn sites. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one is basically trying to, I guess, have a look at news media and make it. This is the first place you go to Uncensored. post those videos of those big events, right. uh, and does a pretty good job. And is always interesting to look through, and lots of interesting videos posted. All up. right, so that's uh, liveleak.com. Liveleak.com. Beautiful. Say. All right, now it was April Fool's Day yesterday. I got up late, so I had no idea, and nobody pranked me, which was a, a relief this year. Uh, but Candice, uh, you got some stuff about April Fools and how it went on the internet. Indeed. Uh, how unlike the internet to be full of hoaxes and April Fools is the day where they can kind of get off on it legitimately. And a number of really creative, elaborate pranks were staged on the internet. And I've just collected a few of the big ones by some of the big players. Um, for example, the torrent site, the Pirate Bay, so any pirates out there would be quite well aware of the Pirate Bay, announced that it would move its servers from Asia and onto US soil and thus dub itself or rename itself the Freedom Bay. Uh, and with that, they announced, would come faster torrents for American citizens and uh, a deletion of all torrents from uh, supposed enemy countries, including North Korea, Iraq, um, one they call Iranistan, and France, for example. So obviously very tongue-in-cheek, though taking a look at some of the comments on that Pirate Bay blog lets you know that some people really did fall for it hook, line and sinker. Um, another timely prank was also played on Twitter users when the social media giant announced that it would go the Wheel of Fortune route and start paying, start charging people $5 a month for the privilege of using vowels. Um, the reason that they kind of put forward for this is that they're trying to push social media in a new direction and get people to communicate more efficiently and more concisely than ever before. So a little bit feasible though, reading through the blog post once again, you kind of realise that it is very uh, in time with April Fool's Day and certainly if you one of the people that retweeted it thinking that it was real, rest assured you're not going to be having to pay for Twitter anytime soon. Um, and treasure hunters were lured by, the, uh, by an elaborate Google prank which turned Google Maps into a treasure map for a day, supposedly inspired by uh, Captain William Kidd, who hid treasure all over the world. They X marked the spot in several big US cities, including San Francisco, Boston, New York, um, and really had people looking through university campuses to see if anything was at those spots. Alas, there really wasn't anything. Um, YouTube had a fantastic prank as well, um, announcing that it was ready to you know, close down the site and, and finally pick the best video. Here's a, here's a short clip. After eight amazing years, it is finally time to review everything that has been uploaded to our site and begin the process of selecting a winner. Every video that has been uploaded to our site will be reviewed by our staff of 30,000 technicians. They'll narrow down the submissions and then our Steam panel will select the best video. 
which will be announced when the website goes back online in 2023, featuring the winner of YouTube and nothing else. <laughs>